much. We just do it from down here. So today we have two individuals that will be, actually all three will be rebaptized. And I want you guys to know that every one of them has made a sound decision to give their hearts to the Lord. One of the things that I need to do, and it's a little housekeeping, is we have to go over the promises that you'll be making to the Lord. And I have them here, okay? And all you have to do is as I read them, just raise your right hand and say, I do, okay? You're not getting married. You're getting married to the Lord, by the way, all right? So why don't you go ahead and stand on this side. Please forgive me for turning my back on you guys, okay? The first baptismal vow is, do you believe in God the Father, in His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit? Amen. Amen. Do you accept the death of Jesus as payment for your sins? Amen. Amen. Do you accept that Jesus will give you a new heart in place of that sinful heart? Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you believe that Jesus is in heaven as the best friend you'll ever have, and he gives you the Holy Spirit so that you can obey him? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you believe that God gave you the Bible as the most important guidebook that we have today? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you believe that God gives you the Ten Commandments to obey, which include the observance of the Sabbath as the day of the week so that we can fellowship with him? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Do you want to help as many people as possible get ready for the soon return of Jesus? Amen. I love that one. That one's a powerful one right there. Um, Do you believe that God gives you special abilities and the... And the gifts of the spirit of prophecy has been given to us as his chosen people. Amen. Amen. Do you want to help God's church with your influence and your efforts, which also includes their tithing? Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you want to take good care of your body because the Holy Spirit lives there now? Amen. With the help of God's power. Do you want to obey the basic principles of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Amen. Praise the Lord. And do you want to be baptized today to show each and every one of us here today that you desire to be a follower of Jesus Christ? Amen. Now, do you want to become a member of the Valley View Seventh-day Adventist Church And do you believe that this church has a special message to give to the world? Amen. Amen. I'll tell you what. These are very special vows. They're not promises that they're making to us. These are promises that they're making to God. And I think that all of us together, working in the spirit of Christ, can actually encourage them. To not only remember these promises that they're making to him, but also remind them of how much God loves them as well. Today is a very special day. Today is a day of celebration. And before we go back and we get ready for baptism, I want to have a special prayer of dedication. Okay? Because I believe that God is speaking to each and every one of your hearts. And I believe that as he speaks to our hearts, the only way that we'll be able to listen is if we allow the Holy Spirit to enter into our hearts and be able to do his will and not our own. So let's pray. Father in heaven, I want to thank you so much for these three beautiful lives that have decided to turn their hearts over to Jesus. You know their struggles. Satan does not go away. As a matter of fact, Satan continues to attack their hearts, attack their lives, even more so right now because of this decision that they have decided to make. And Father, as we prepare to go back there and get ready for baptism, I ask and we pray in the name of Jesus that we not only be baptized in water, but that they may be baptized in the Spirit of God. 
so that everything that they do reflects their love for you. And Father, seal every one of these lives for eternity as you come again to take us home. Amen. We ask and we pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. Um, Madison, you're going to go on that side. Gentlemen, we're going to go this way. Okay. Thank you, Pastor. We'll now prepare our hearts for the services, and uh, we'll proceed with our services. And when they are ready for baptism, we'll open the curtains and have the baptisms. Thank you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Let's all stand as we sing near to the heart of God. remain standing. Dear Heavenly Father, that is where we want to be, near to the heart of God. Father, your love personified in perfect love casts out all fear. May we, Lord, Lord, adopt this love into our heart every day and exhibit that towards our fellow man and Father and how we worship and serve you as well. We thank you for allowing us to be here today in peace and freedom to worship. And we thank you for these folks that are making this commitment today. In your name we pray. Amen. Is Marie, are you going to come up and do the lead up in the... Oh, Maria, sorry. 
We'll be singing the theme song, Jesus' Name Above All Names. Let's go ahead now with our congregational prayer, a special time where we can pray together as a church body. And I'll just ask if there are any special requests we have this morning. We want to remember Miss Arlene Thomas, who is now on the lung transplant list. And so we want to pray that that will come uh, to be a blessing for her and for her family. They need prayers as well. Uh, we also want to remember these meetings as they continue in Beckley and the pastor days he speaks with us. Ronnie, cousin Ronnie, yes, yes, thank you. Brother Thaddeus, yes. Um, I went last week for another operation on my eye, and I am seeing great down in my eye now. So, uh, such a blessing. Yes, that's great. Well, I didn't know you had that this week. That's great. Oh, sorry. I had a thought about that this week. I hope nobody has to do a construction project because I'm sure the price of lumber is going to go steeply higher, and you know, which is not the way it should be. But Sister Becky? Okay. All right. Thank you. We checked in on Ernestine this week. One of the elders gave her a call, and um, we've got to continue keeping her prayer. And the monks are recovering from COVID. I guess they're still a little under the weather. Okay. For Vicky's family, she has a number that are ill and under the weather. Sister? Yeah. 
Charlie's. And yes, Wayne, we'll make this the last request. Indeed. It is. Isn't a high Sabbath? <laughs> Absolutely. Any, any unspoken request in the body? Okay, I see lots of hands. God knows what's on your heart. Uh, let us go to prayer now at this time. We'll have just a moment of silent prayer, and then I will pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, you have heard the petitions and you know what's on each heart that's here today. We are so thankful that we can leave our praises and prayer requests with you, Father. We have an advocate and an open prayer line 24-7 with you. Lord, so many things that you've done. You, you even had the plan of salvation in place before the world was created. And we're thankful, Lord, that you love us enough that you came and sent your son in full flesh to die for each one of us for our sins. Each one of these folks that's going into this water today and each one of us here today, you would have come and died just for one person. Thank you for being an awesome God and for loving us so much. Help us, Father, to represent you with what we say and do. May we be a living sermon the way we live our lives through the power of Jesus Christ in us. And Lord, we ask today that you be with the sermon and the message today as the pastor brings it to us. And Lord, we just pray that your, your blessings would be upon the rest of the day and that we may leave this place knowing that we're in the presence of the mighty God. In your name we pray, amen. What a privilege we have today to see three lives be buried in these holy waters. I prayed this morning so that the Holy Spirit is in these waters. And I believe he is. And at this time, I'd like to ask for my brother James to come out as our first baptismal candidate. This young man has had some struggles. But today, in the name of Jesus, Amen. he buries everything here and he leaves it all in the hands of God. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, you see this heart and you know it so well. And today, James publicly wants to announce that officially you are his first love. And he's had his battles. And they're hard to overcome. But today, in the name of Jesus, we bury all of his troubles here in these waters. James, because you have decided to give your heart to the Lord. And you want to fervently walk with him. I baptize you today in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, so that your sins may be blotted out and your name be written in the book of life. Amen.
I love you. I love you. <laughs> now I'm going to ask for Madison. For Madison to come down. This was an incredible thing. She came to me this week and she said, Pastor, I've been thinking about this a long time. And she says, I feel that now is the right time to do it. <laughs> she was telling me that she was cold and I said, the water is warm. So now she agrees that it feels really good. It's okay. <laughs> God truly understands the struggles that every one of his children faces. Go this way. It's easier for you. Okay. Hold this in your hand. Hold this in your hand. Let us pray. Father, today in the name of Jesus, Madison has decided that she wants to rededicate her heart and her life to you. Only you know the struggles that she has gone through, Father. But because we do know that your Holy Spirit is in this water, today she has decided to take that leap of faith and leave all her past, leave all her troubles behind. And today, Madison, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, I baptize you for the remission and the forgiveness of your sins, so that your name may be written in the book of life. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Let me walk you that way. Okay. I'm going to enjoy this one, by the way, because Joel and I, we've been talking about this. A lot of you may not know that. This is Joel's way of saying, I want to leave the world behind, and I'm seeking a new life in Christ Jesus today. Joel? This young man has had some struggles. Like each and every one of us have struggles. But today, we're leaving those problems behind. This doesn't mean that Satan is not going to stop attacking you. He's going to continue to try as hard as he possibly can. That's his job. But when he does come to you, today you can say, Satan, no matter what you do, I have victory in Jesus. So now you can be on your way. <laughs> Let's pray. Could you keep this one open so you can pinch your nose and hold on to my hand? Okay. Okay. Father, what a journey Joel has had. Like each and every one of us, we've had our ups, we've had our downs. And when we look back on life, sometimes it looks like we were more down than what we were up. But this is the moment that defines everything. Because today, in the name of Jesus, Joel has made the decision to leave everything behind. And to walk this path with you. Though Satan will still try 
to attack. We ask and we pray in the name of Jesus that today, as he takes this first step for victory in Jesus, he will understand and he will know that no longer does Satan have power over him. For that, Joel, it is my privilege to baptize you today in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So that your sins may be erased, and so that your name may be written in the book of life, we give thanks to God for this miracle in your life. Amen. I love you, man. Thank you. The series may finish today, but this could be the start of your new walk with Jesus Christ. You know, never leave off for tomorrow what you can do today. The Apostle Paul reminds us that today is the day of your salvation, for your tomorrows have never been promised. And if you feel that you need to give your life to Jesus today, this water is still going to be on, and it's very nice and warm. And if I have to change again, to do it again today, in the name of Jesus, we will do it again. Because my concern and my biggest worry is that your life be sealed for eternity in Jesus Christ. And so today, if you feel the need to give your life back over to him, don't delay. Come see me. See one of the elders. Talk to us and tell us what we can do to secure your life in Jesus Christ. I'm going to go back now and I'm going to get ready. Because guess what? Now I have the privilege and the honor of sharing God's word with each and every one of you. That's right. Amen, brother. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Okay, we'll proceed with our services now. Uh, the offering today, uh, if you want to mark an envelope for it, is for Washington Adventist University. Otherwise, any loose offerings that you put in the box at the back uh, would go for our local church budget. And uh, we know the local church budget is for everything to run and operate this church. And our tithes can also be dropped in the box at the back as you, as you enter or exit the church. Let's pray over those offerings now. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have given us blessings, and some of these blessings are in the form of resources, uh, what we would call money. And Father, you've asked that we return one-tenth of our first fruits, of the one-tenth off the top of our income as a tithe, and to also bring an offering, it says. And well, Lord, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to participate in this process of learning to be unselfish, to share and give back what, what is rightfully yours. Thank you for these offerings today. May they go for their intended purposes. And we thank you for everything you do for us. Amen. All right, this time we'll let the children take the offering. And then Brother Wayne Martin is going to uh, give us his children's story.
friend over here. He is my friend, but he's not my very best friend. Jesus is my very best friend. So I'm going to get him to help me demonstrate something to you. And uh, James, if you step up here for a minute, I, I just want you to understand something. to uh, bring that up because uh, God impressed it on my heart this morning because I didn't even know I had a uh, children's story. So I had to make up something real quick, real quick, real fast. And I thought to myself, well, that, that's a good uh, scenario right there. And uh, when you got people like uh, uh, my friend over here, who steps right up and says, yeah, I'll, I'll help you, brother. Uh, you know, when you get good friends like that, you can do stuff. When Christ tells us we can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. W uh, would any of you like to pray this morning? Would you like to have a prayer? Uh, you want to have a prayer this morning? No? No? Okay, come on. Let's, come on, come on. She, she was going to go. You did it last time. Come on. You can have prayer for us. Bow your heads, everyone. Heavenly Father, th thank you for this wonderful day and this baptism. Thank you so much. And um, please, um, please anoint the pastor's lips as to do your will. Please be with him. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, children, you may go back to your seats. Oh, thank you. But I'm going to be calling on you. like my brother's accent from Delaware. Use, use guys, use. I, my friends from Pittsburgh used to talk like that when I went to WVU. And they, they had certain things they said like use guys and I, I like that. So I really appreciate it. Brings back good memories. Brother Bill is now going to bring us his gift of music Amen. and we appreciate so much when he gets an opportunity to sing for us. Oh, 
curse from which I stumbled and fell. Evil is banished to be eternal hell. No. to the great I am. We will live in the light of the risen Lamb. See all around now the name bow down to sing the only sound or the praises to Christ our King slowly the names from the book are read I know the King so there's no That is great. Thank you so much. Um, I want to go over for our listening audience as well as our congregation. If you've been impressed and, and really enjoyed these meetings as, as I have, you may want to share them with folks uh, in your family or friends or coworkers. And well, they'll be available not only on our Facebook page, but also they'll be archived onto YouTube. So here are the steps to go through if you want to watch them on YouTube. First, go to the internet browser and type in YouTube. And in the search engine, type Valley View Seventh Day Adventist Church. Valley View Seventh Day Adventist Church. And then just scroll down till you see the channel with that same title, and it'll have a picture of our church. Click on that channel. On the channel page, you will see playlist. Click on playlist and click on a man called Jesus. 
and then you can go to whichever video you want to watch or the entire series as you choose. Um, there's also, for those in attendance today, there is a scan, scanner code, a QR code out here on the bulletin board that you can take a picture of with your phone if you so wish so you can access directly to that site. Pastor, we'll ask you to come up. I think there's one piece of business we need to do. Um, may I have your permission to call for a vote to, for membership? Okay, we'll ask for our baptismal candidates to come up and we'll also uh, be doing a vote, church vote for membership on board. Yeah. Okay, I'll let you take care of that, brother. So part of the process is um, asking them to be part of our church. And so today, come on up, Joe. Today, all of our church members have the opportunity to welcome these three lives how many of you accept the vote of all three of these individuals into our Valley View Seventh-day Adventist Church? Raise your right hand. Amen. This is your family. Amen. This is your family. It's not your immediate, but it's your extended family. And I have to let you know, the family of God is a very big family. It's not small. Um, I can recall going to the general conference session in 2015 where... Uh, over 450,000 people were in the city of San Antonio. Hey, so it's, it, we're, we're not small potatoes. And that's not even including everybody. But today, officially, to welcome you guys into the church, James, here's your baptismal certificate. Madison, here is your baptismal certificate. And Joel, Here's your baptismal certificate. This is just a small token of our appreciation. The, the payment isn't seen here. The reward is in heaven. <laughs> Amen? And that's what we look forward to. Thank you guys very much. You all may have a seat, and, and let's prepare our hearts and our minds for what the Lord has to say for us this morning, right? The benefits are beyond our expectations. They're absolutely out of this world. I guess it's my turn then to do the call to worship since uh, I took over his, his, his realm. The call to worship this morning is found in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. When you have it, please say amen. Amen. I cheated. I, I wrote it on here, so, you know, I'm, that's not very fair. <laughs> The word of God says in Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17, and I'm reading out of the Good News translation, it says, I will make you well again. Isn't that beautiful? See, all, all the struggles that we've been going through, God is going to make us well again. And it says, and I will heal your wounds. Though your enemies say Zion is an outcast, no one cares about her, it says, I, the Lord, have spoken. Let's pray. Father, this morning, I know, <laughs> I know there's a party going up in heaven right now. And we are rejoicing right alongside with heaven, Lord, but I can't wait till I get up there. Because right now we have been bombarded with so many wounds, Lord. We've been cut. We've been hurt. We have struggled, Lord. But today, in the name of Jesus, your promise is that you will heal us. And as you work in that healing process, Lord, don't just work on it spiritually. Also work on it physically. Because it's the physical that brings us to the throne of God. The spirituality comes along with it, Lord. But I ask in the name of Jesus that right now you remove me out of the way. And that your Holy Spirit may descend upon this place. And that your words may resonate through this voice. Speak to us, O oh Father. We ask and we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. A man called Jesus. That's been the topic of our conversation all week long. 
we started out last week, Saturday, as how Jesus began his ministry. Then we saw how Jesus identifies with our struggles. Going one step further, he helps us to walk by faith and also to work in his promises. Then he promises to give us an abundance of life. How many of you want abundant life? I sure do. I, I mean, I, I can't even begin to tell you. I want Jesus to give me life eternal. I, I, I'm tired of this world, James. I want to go home. And I know that that phrase means a number of different things to a lot of us. But for me, I want to go home means I want to see Jesus. And I don't know if that is your, your desire today, but I'm going to tell you right now, I will share my desire with you, and that is to have abundant life in Jesus Christ. Then we saw how Jesus desires to make us whole. You know, he doesn't want to leave you where you are at. He wants to make you better than what you were before. Oh, I wish you would have been here last night. Last night's message was so powerful, it resonated with me. Because we talked about the, the young man that was demonized by the, the, the legions of demons in the city of Garena. And people, this is the saddest thing that I could discover in all of the Bible. People, when they came from the town and they saw this man, they were sad because they didn't recognize him. But they didn't want to recognize what God had done. You know, sometimes people that we meet with, people that we know, people in our own family want nothing to do with us because Jesus has changed our lives. And this is where we are called to demonstrate to them what's the difference between the old Abner and the new one that now lives for Jesus Christ. Maybe then they'll have the, the, the clue that tells them, no matter what you believe, no matter what you go through, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Amen. Jesus is strong. Then we saw how Jesus, apart from wanting to give us abundant life, Jesus now desires to calm our storms. There is a storm over your life. The Bible calls it the great controversy. And today you saw how three lives overcame that great controversy by stepping into those holy waters. Now I want to tell you something. Those waters are not holy because your pastor was in there. Those waters were holy because they were blessed and prayed over. The Holy Spirit was in this place or is in this place. Always, always, always. Then Jesus showed us how he desires to set us free. Jesus wants you to have abundant life. But he says, I came to give life more abundantly. And I came to give it freely. That means it cost you nothing. But I have to say, it cost heaven everything. Oh, then finally today, Jesus wants us to have this discussion about how he desires not just to give you freedom, but how he wants to restore you. See, the, the restoration that Jesus wants to give you, the restoration that heaven wants to provide for us, it's not any kind of restoration. It's that pre-edemic restoration where sin had not even come into this world. I don't think you guys are listening. Or maybe you're not feeling it. But Jesus wants to restore our corrupted lives to what it was before the fall of man. 
And he wants to make sure that today, in the name of Jesus, you have victory in Jesus. Sing it with me. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He what? He sought me? And he bought me with what? Oh, praise the Lord. He loved me and I knew him. And all my life is to him. What's the rest? With what? Woo! There is power in the blood of Jesus. Amen? And I want to excite you about that because I feel that just because we're Seventh-day Adventists, we're, we're a little afraid to get a little emotional. Come on, folks. Knowing Jesus is emotional enough. Knowing what he did for us should have our hearts overjoyed, bursting out of our chests. Because Jesus did something for me and for you that you couldn't do for yourself. And that's what salvation is all about. That's what Jesus is all about. That's why a man called Jesus came here to this earth to give you life more abundantly. I want to talk about that restoration that he wants to do in your life today. I'm reading out of the Good News Translation. It's a commentary version. But I want you to look in your Bibles. We're going to go to Luke chapter 18. I love the book of Luke because the book of Luke tells me a lot about a different perspective of how a physician saw what Jesus did in this world. We're going to look in Luke chapter 18 and we're going to start in verse 35. But before we start in verse 35, here's the background to it. I have to give you a background, see? Because Jesus now, before he talks to them, before this happens, Jesus was talking and professing about his death. And most people, when they say, you know, I'm, I'm going to die, nobody really wants to hear that. You know, I, I recall my father, and by the way, Bill, thank you very much for that beautiful song, No More Nights, No More Days. That was my father's favorite song. And it took all the strength that heaven could give me for me to sing it on his deathbed. It was hard to fight back the tears. But I believe in that promise that soon will be a day where there will be no more night. Well, there will be no more pain and no more tears ever crying again because Jesus will make all things new. And the way he wants to make all things new is that he wants to start by restoring you. So Jesus was talking about his death. And as he spoke about his death, the one thing that the disciples did not appreciate that he was saying, I'm not going to be with you much longer. Because what they were hoping for is that Jesus would restore the kingdom of David again so that they could receive all of the power and rule over the nations. But they, they couldn't rule over the nations because the God of all creation still was not ruling over their hearts. Do you understand what I'm saying? In order for you to have power and victory in Jesus, Jesus has to rule your heart. You cannot continue to, fight, to fly blindly thinking that just because you come to church, just because you know of Jesus, you may, not, you may know of Jesus, but you don't know the man called Jesus. And because you don't know the man called Jesus, you're living just as righteously as anybody else out there. Now I know that somebody here may not like or appreciate what I'm saying. But I want you to understand something. I haven't been called to give you candy. I haven't been called to feed you milk. God has placed me in this position at such a time like this so that we begin to eat solid spiritual foods. We have gotten so accustomed to having that warm milk and sometimes as Christians we have fallen asleep at the wheel, at the helm kind of comparing it to what we heard this week how Jesus wants to save you and Jesus fell asleep in the boat 
Or at least the disciples thought that Jesus was falling asleep, that he had slept, just because his head was on a pillow. Jesus never, listen to me carefully, Jesus never falls asleep on his children. He is always on the go. He is always awake. He is always vigilant. And he wants to make sure that you are vigilant as well. That's why crucibles come our way. Jesus even told them how he was going to be killed. This, Jesus went to the details, to the nitty and the gritty. And, and, and even though they kind of looked at him and said, Oh, you're, you're joking. I mean, <laughs> what, did you forget what they did for you? I mean, they brought you in on a donkey and, and, and they proclaimed you their king. How many times have we not proclaimed Jesus to be the king of our hearts? And how many times have we not failed? Should we expect anything less from them? So I want to take you today to Luke chapter 18, verse 35. And this is interesting because this is the first time all this series we've seen that Jesus was walking around the areas of Galilee. And this time he was in Jericho. Jesus was coming near Jericho, the Bible says. And there was a blind man who was sitting by the side of the road begging. Sometimes we have blind people in this world just because, and they're blind because they don't see the truth, but just because they, they, they go to a church, they feel that they've got it right. See, I have a good friend, a good friend of mine. I'm going to reserve his name because of privacy reasons. He's legally blind. And it's ironic because whenever you see him, he's, his, his pupils are, are, are like zipping from side to side. And he'll look at you and he'll try to look at you the right way and he'll do this number. And what's amazing about it is that his senses have been so heightened because of his lack for vision. You know, I remember visiting him one time at his house in Texas and and. You know, all of a sudden, he calls out for his son. He says, why are you doing that? I said, why are you doing what? No, my son, he's doing this and that. And I told him not to turn on the TV. And I told him it's time for worship. I was like, I don't hear anything. That's because you can't hear anything. But I can. And then all of a sudden, you hear his son saying, what, Dad? You know what I'm talking about. You better turn off that TV. It's not time for that. Oh, man, it's like, I didn't hear anything. And he had it low enough so that you couldn't hear it. But the father who was blind could hear it. I think that's incredible. I think it's amazing the way God has made us with so much tenacity that when we fail at seeing something, there's another sense that kicks in and all of a sudden we know what it is. But see, for us, for whatever reason, I, I still don't understand it. All of our senses, all of our Christian antennas have either been broken or somebody is jamming them. Because all of a sudden, you can't see the difference between what the Bible says and what a man is saying. I'm going to tell you right now. If you ever go to another church and the person is not preaching out of the Word of God, but he's given you a wonderful message that's empowering, that's rejuvenating, and that excites you because it gets you to dig deep into your pockets and give more money to him, you better get up and you better run. Don't walk away. Run away. See, because the Bible says that in the end of days, we're going to have tickling of ears. We're going to want to desire to hear things that please us. I'm sorry. I'm not here to tell you things that please you. I'm here to tell you things that please Him. And you may not like what's being said because it applies to your life. I have no control over that. The only person that can control that is you. That's it. 
But look here. He was sitting by the road, this blind man, and he was begging. Verse 36 says, he heard a crowd that was passing by. You know, that's the thing about Jesus. Jesus never went anywhere by himself unless he did it on purpose. And whenever he was alone, he would often go into the wilderness, into the loneliness, and he would talk with his father. You ought to try that sometimes. It will do you some good. That's right. And I will exalt you over all the earth. You know, last night after I left here, I was outside for a little while. And I can hear the coyotes out here. And I said, man, that's what they sound like. Okay, now I have a reference. Yeah, we have coyotes here, by the way. We're in the mountains after all, right? And Jesus was passing by, and, and, and all of a sudden he had this big crowd with him, and, and this man is asking this question. We all recognize him as Bartimaeus, but this man asks the question, he says, Whoa, what's all the commotion about? Look at what verse 37 says, okay? Verse 37 in my version says, Jesus of Nazareth was passing by when they told him. See, he couldn't see. So he didn't know what was going on. But James, let me tell you, in the name of Jesus, he heard all of that commotion. And as he heard that commotion, it got him excited and it got him curious. And now he's saying, whoa, 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 what's going on here? Somebody said, hey, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> Don't look now, but Jesus is passing by. <laughs> right? How are you going to say that to someone who can't see? Don't look now, but Jesus is passing by. Look at, look at what happens here in verse 38. Because the minute that they told him that Jesus was passing by, verse 38 says, And he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This blind man, who was blind physically, had 20-20 spiritual vision. He recognized Jesus, and he didn't just call him by his first name. He called him by his entire angelic, heavenly name. Can you say that today about the Savior that's passing by? Can you say, oh, Jesus, son of David, ooh, have mercy on me. Oh, see, and this is what happens because... It so happens to be that whenever you want to come to Jesus, you have people that will always try to hold you back. Do you think that this series was on purpose? See, you've got people today that are holding you back. And you've got people that have held your heart and your mind captive by the forces of Satan. You're being hijacked. But pastor, I'm free. I'm here. I live in the United States. Yeah, guess what? Name one person in this world that is free from Satan. He's not in this world. <laughs> he will be soon. Amen. But guess what? Every one of us is being held captive. And there's a ransom. For your captivity. But I got to tell you. Praise God. That that ransom has already been paid for. Amen. <laughs> and so now. It's no longer Satan who's holding us captive. It's ourselves who are holding us captive. To his will. And not the will of God. Look at what the Bible says. Okay. Because the Bible's just. It's, it's beautiful. It's poetic to me. It says the people in front scolded him. And they told him to be quiet. You know. Have they ever done that to you James? When they said. Shh, quiet man. Don't, don't bother Jesus. You know the disciples did that a lot. You know. And Jesus finally had to tell them. Hey. Stop that. Let the children come to me. Because the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. It doesn't belong to you. If you're not like one of these children. You can't see heaven. You can't see my father. So what does your attitude tell you today about who, which side are you on? Are you screaming from the top of your lungs, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Or are you the other voice saying, Shh, be quiet, don't bother Jesus, leave him alone. Jesus is too busy. 
He doesn't have time for you. And if you believe that today, I will tell you right here, right now, that is a lie from the pits of hell. Jesus always makes time for you. As a matter of fact, Jesus made 33 and a half years times for you and for me. That's right. Anyone who comes to the master, he doesn't reject them. He doesn't push them out. He embraces them and he hugs them. And he says, thank you, my child, for coming back to me. I love that. I love that. But see, this is, this is what you call and this is what's described as tenacity. Because the rest of verse 39 says, But he shouted even more loudly, Oh, son of David, please have mercy on me. There was nothing that anyone could do or could say to keep Bartimaeus quiet from receiving the Holy Spirit that day. And I'm, I'm hurt. I'm going to tell you why I'm hurt, Butch. I'm hurt because whenever we hear something that fills us with the Spirit of God, that edifies us, we just kind of sit back and we say, hmm, amen, mm. yeah. Mm. The Bible says, the Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I'm not trying to make this place a mockery. I'm trying to set your hearts on fire. Because for so long, people have been telling us, you can't do that. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, it is very hard, very difficult for you to be quiet. I never wanted to be a pastor. You all know the story. I've said it from this pulpit. But God called me. And as he called me, I have no choice, Carolyn, but to speak of the love of Jesus. Because his heart is so great. To save a wretch like me, amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now was found. Bartimaeus once was blind. But now he sees. Amen. And so he began to shout even more. So then this is. Look at what verse 40, 40 says. Okay. So Jesus stopped. Out of all of the people that were touching him, out of all the people that were pushing him, out of all the people that were calling out for his name, you know the one that he heard the most? Man. <laughs> he heard the one that couldn't see. <laughs> and not only did he hear the one that everybody was trying to hush and ignore and couldn't see, but then look at what he says. So Jesus stopped and he ordered for the blind man to be brought to him. When you begin to shout out in the name of Jesus and you call out to the Lord, he orders that you come to him. No, come on, you guys. When you begin to call out to Jesus and he hears your voice, he orders you to come to him. Amen? See, Jesus wants to have this intricate relationship with you, but it's up to you to desire to have it with him as well. And how, depending upon how much you shout, depending upon how much you ask him, those doors will be open or you will close them yourself. So when he came near Jesus, this is an incredible question. Jesus asked him, what do you want from me? <laughs> Isn't that ironic? The Savior of the world, seeing the condition of this person, now all of a sudden is asking him a question. Hi, oh, well, what do you want from me? W well, um, I, I, I want to be able to see. Why do you think Jesus asked that question? Wasn't it obvious? 
He's sitting by the city of Jericho on the outskirts, and he's begging for his life because he needs to find a way. He can't work. He needs to find a way of living. So he begs for a living. And then all of a sudden, Jesus asks him, so what do you want from me? Was it not obvious? I'm here to tell you today that Jesus, and I, and, and, and I remember a, a theologian, a pastor, told me this. He said, Rodriguez, I want you to know something, and I want you guys to know this today. Jesus is too much of a gentleman to invade your life. Jesus will never do for you what you don't give him permission to do in your life. That is something that we must understand because we think that just because he's Jesus, he's going to snap his fingers and all of a sudden everything is going to go back to normal and then we'll be content. No, you have to come to him. You can't continue to stay there and slumber and think that just because you're hearing something from a distance, he's going to save you. You have to get up out of the comfort of your own chair. God, listen. You have to get up out of the comfort of your own chair and you need to learn to come to Jesus because heaven came out of its comfort zone to save you and to save me. Don't think for one second that this was an easy choice for heaven to make. It was not. When you look at John chapter 18 and you look at the struggles that Jesus faced in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was sweating blood. And he was calling out to the Father. And he was saying, Lord, Father, if there's another way that you and I could save humanity, hey, let's do it. But not, your, not my will be done. Let your will be done. Do you think that for one second Jesus did not struggle? Jesus struggled. And the kind of struggle that Jesus went through for you and for me, we will never know. Because thank God he paid the price. Salvation is no longer up to you. The only thing that is up to you is to make the decision to follow Jesus. Look what the rest of this verse says. Then he says, Sir, I want to see again. That was in verse 41. And in verse 42, Jesus says to him, <laughs> I love this. It's so simple. <laughs> then see. Wait, 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 wait. It's not that simple. No, you said you wanted to see again, right? How many of us want to see Jesus? Amen. Guess what? Then see. I don't know what else to tell you. Then see. Look, this is what the Bible says. Then see. For your faith has made you what? Woo! See, this is why you must have faith. It's not because you can do things that are impossible, but it's because God does things that are impossible in your life. But the only way that you can see those impossibilities is if you have faith. And guess what? When you have faith, guess what? Here's the kicker. Then you'll see. <laughs> How simple is that? Well, hey, is it very hard? Why do we complicate it? Why do we complicate it? Look, this is what verse 43 says, okay? And I finish with this. And it says, at once he was able to see and he followed Jesus giving thanks to God. And when the crowd saw it, they did what? Are you ready today? To praise the Lord. How many of us today are blinded by sin? I'm not even going to lie. I'm going to share something with you. Your pastor sometimes is tempted beyond realizations. And because he is tempted beyond realization, the reason why Satan does that is because he wants to make sure that this message that is being preached today, that is given to us by the Spirit of God, does not go forward. Every one of us has something that we're struggling with. I don't care who you are. I don't care what it's with. 
I've had people in my congregations that have struggled with adultery. They've struggled with pornography. They've struggled with, with um, child abuse. They've struggled with mental issues. They've struggled with emotional issues. They've struggled with alcoholism. They've struggled with drugs. And the list can go on and on and on. Let me tell you something. Because you are here today, Satan wants to tempt you even more. Satan wants to keep you out of God's church. And this is for the young people. See, because for the young people, sometimes Satan wants to keep you so entertained with a number of things out there so that the last thing on your mind is how Jesus wants to save you. We've all been blinded by sin. Bartimaeus' problem was a physical one. But what he lacked physically, he made up for it spiritually. And then one day, one day, he met this man named Jesus. And he said, Son of David, please have mercy on me. And Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do? He says, All I want to do is, I, I want to see. The spirit of prophecy says that when he said that he wanted to see, he said, I want to see the face of God. Patriarchs and prophets. He wants to see the face of God. Do you want to see the face of God today? Come and see him. He doesn't look like me. He doesn't even act like me. But I will tell you this much. He's long-suffering. He's merciful. And he loves you beyond the realms of your expectations. I finish with this. No one in this world, not mother, not father, not spouse, not children, not friend, will ever love you the way Jesus loves you. My call this morning is very simple. If you're going through a situation that is blinding your faith, and you want to call out to Jesus this morning, I invite you to come up here so that I can have a special prayer with you. Now is the time to be able to do that. I'm the first one up here, by the way. But if you want to see Jesus, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to come up here. And I want to challenge you to call out the same way Bartimaeus did and say, Jesus, son of David, please have mercy on me. Because Jesus wants to have mercy on you. No one will ever love you like the master. You don't have to be afraid anymore. We've got two young ladies here. My question to you is, will you be bold enough to call out for Jesus the same way Bartimaeus did? Come, come. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. This isn't just for someone who hasn't been baptized. This is for people that want to see the face of God. You got work to do, and the first work that needs to be done is you've got to get up and you've got to come to Jesus. Thank you. Who else is willing to say, Jesus, I want to see the face of God. Come on, don't delay. The calling is done today, and, and guess what? It might be done tomorrow, but it might not be done tomorrow. Amen, amen. And I will tell you this much. Heaven will go and has gone to great lengths to make sure that you can see again the face of God. Amen. With that being said, let's stand to our feet and let's have a final prayer. Keep the music going. Keep the music going. Father, what a beautiful garden 
you have given us this morning. You have brought those that desire to say this morning today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, please have mercy on me. And I don't know how that mercy is going to look, Father, but you have work to do in every heart that has stood up, in every heart that is here present, and every person who now desires to call out the same way Bartimaeus did. And Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you restore our lives. Don't just restore us to what we were before. Restore us to that pre-edemic status where we were once found sinless so that again like Bartimaeus we can see the face of God Father I don't know what you're doing in every heart that's here present but all I can tell you is what you're doing in mine and I want to thank you so much for doing what you have done Father there is still work to be done so we ask and we pray in the name of Jesus, Son of David, please have mercy on us. And as we come to you, Lord, all we want to do is tell you we're here because we want to see the face of God our Father. And we pray and ask in the name of Jesus that as you open our spiritual eyes, that as you open up our spiritual hearts, Lord, that you will do the work that needs to be done so that we may gaze upon your face and we may be able to tell you face to face one day, very soon, lo, here is my God. And I have waited for him for so long and he's finally here to take me home. Lord, that is our victory chant. And we long to say it, but we need for you to heal us right here and right now. Have your will with us. We ask and we pray these things in Jesus' precious name. And all together, God's people said, Amen and Amen. May the Lord continue to bless you. May the Father continue to guide you.